Now, it's been a very strange week for international news. Let's start with former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He's a man of wild ups and downs who's managed to bounce around for decades. But do you think that he's finally run out of political lives, Terry? Well, certainly when it comes to political lives, he's probably doing better than a cat. I mean, he's uh, he's uh, lost his seat, he's got his seat back, he's uh, um, said some silly things, got sacked from the shadow cabinet way back when he had affairs, when he was editor of The Spectator um, and also a member of parliament. And, of course, more recently, of course, he was Mr Brexit. And then he won the prime ministership after not having... Uh, got the opportunity in 2016 because uh, Michael Gove, uh, another senior Tory, stabbed him in the back, uh, won that uh, 2019 election with a stonking majority, quote-unquote, that's his quote-unquote, um, uh, and crashed through what is known as the, the Labor Red Wall in central and northern England. Uh, but, uh, but certainly I think COVID has been his undoing in one way or another. Um, yes, he had the near-death experience at the start of it, uh, but certainly I think... If you're going to uh, if you're going to uh, go hard on your population, you don't um, go soft on yourself, and that's exactly what Boris Johnson and the people at Number Ten Downing Street did, and they got found out. And the, he has paid a well, a personal and a political price for it. But the latest, of course, is that um, he has been found uh, to have misled the House of Commons uh, by a parliamentary privileges committee, which uh, was actually. Uh, dominated by a majority of Conservative MPs, but uh, headed by a former Labor Cabinet Minister, Harriet Harman. And uh, he basically labelled as a kangaroo court, and before that reported, he decided to quit his seat altogether. So he is out of Parliament, or I think he's in the process of going out of Parliament at the moment. But uh, but this uh, Privileges Committee report uh, found that he'd misled Parliament a number of times, so basically telling little fibs, which became one huge lie. Well, I think and uh, that he needed to be punished for that by suspension from, well, because he's quitting, suspension from uh, access to uh, the parliament for 90 days, which is in British terms a, a huge kick in the bum. Well, they could have three new prime ministers in that period of time. But also, I think the best part of uh, him is being immortalised coming down that zip line. I don't know if you remember where he, he was wearing, he was flying those flags and then he got stuck halfway down the zip line and was left hanging there for a while. I think that's a, a piece of footage that we'll have forever. But you're quite right. The release of the Partygate report has been rather damning. Practising hypocrisy in the middle of a so-called crisis, and this is a crisis talked up by the political class, is a pretty good way to encourage and enrage the mob. Now, we're seeing things like MPs being told to wear their masks for the cameras outside number 10 before attending parties within. Do you think that Boris is meant to be the one and only sacrificial lamb in this Partygate saga? No, well, others have paid the price, particularly in terms of number 10 staff. And of course, uh, at the moment, there's a uh, another uh, senior Tory fellow called Ben Bailey, who's a, a candidate to, for the mayoralty of London, a Tory candidate for the for, for London mayor, um, who was one of the people who was nominated for a peerage in Boris Johnson's resignation honours. Now, he is basically uh, uh, in a position where the police are investigating him now for a party gate style breach because uh, um, he and his staff were having a bit of a booze up in the middle of a, of a COVID lockdown. And, and unfortunately, somebody with a mobile phone camera decided to film it for posterity. Um, so he could actually lose his peerage over it and he could actually lose his uh, right to contest the, the, the London mayoralty as well. Um, so, yes, other people are paying the price. But the bottom line is he was the prime minister. He was the, he was the head honcho and he shouldn't, he shouldn't have been in a position. It doesn't matter what you think about uh, the politics and the morality or the philosophy of uh, measures like the lockdowns. The thing is, if you decide to do it for everybody else, you do it for yourself. And he said, no, no, that's fine. Nobody's going to care if what we do here, we'll just do our own thing. You know, we're, we're in it together, but, you know, you contrast those images of Partygate in terms of some of the videos and still photos that came out um, well, and with the House of Commons report. And you contrast that with St George's Chapel, Windsor, when the Queen... The poor queen had to go to the funeral of her husband and sit alone, masked, um, isolated from her family, isolated from her friends and isolated from her people, while Boris Johnson was partying on. I think uh, he's paid a, a deserved political price for this. 
Well, that's an image that shows the difference between the royal family and our political class and what they think of service and what they think of the general public.